Yeah, hello and welcome. I'm having the wonderful order as my guest today. And we will talk about El Burro, a La Granja game. And Oda, how are you? Hello, Lee. Thanks for having me. I'm fine. The weather in Germany is very good, so I'm enjoying it. Yeah, uh, right. It's actually for a couple of days, it's beautiful. Hopefully, wherever you are, the weather is also fine. Not too warm, not too cold. Um, we will, in a couple of seconds, minutes, we will switch over to Tabletopia, to Elbo that currently may be pre-ordered, crowdfunded um, by Wire Game Found and Wire Spieleschmiede. And I will put, when later the video is at YouTube, I will put the links into the show notes so that you can follow um, the two campaigns. And first of all, thank you all very much for helping the game to get funded. We are very, very grateful uh, for this. Order one, do you want to add something to you uh, to this? Yes, I'm very happy that the game is uh, funded and I'm um, really looking forward to seeing it on the table. But since it will be uh, published a little bit later in the year, we only have the digital version right now. So. Yeah, uh, hopefully, hopefully you're in, in enjoying this as well. It's Tabletopia. Tabletopia is a great, great platform for online gaming, but it has a couple of things that are not ideal for a game uh, like El Boro, where you are putting cards below stuff, where you're putting stuff on top of boards, and you're constantly shifting. So there may be some things that seem odd. Um, and what you will also notice is we are using the German language material here. But today, every English language stuff, so cards and play aids and rules will be implemented as well. So starting tomorrow, most probably, you can also try out the English uh, language versions. What Ode and I will do is, and it's mainly Ode because he is the expert, um, we will walk you through one of the four game rounds of the game so that you get may get a better idea um, what the game is all about before we do this i want to show you some things in regards to the components so obviously this is not uh, el Bobo, this is oranien boga canal but i want to show you the size of the game box so it's, it will be that game box, but thicker, wider here. So this is 73 millimeters and it will be 90. And really the, f the box will be full of stuff. So Randfold, more than 200 uh, wooden uh, playing pieces and lots of tableaus and cardboard stuff. And the player boards, this is from Boon Lake. They are done in the same way. You see, or you may see that this is double layout and so you see they are connected in here and if you you can keep them as they are here or you can fix them there are two points here is one of them with some small stickers so you are having a double layer playing board and in contrast to quite a few other game boards double layered and uh, even triple layered boards they are not warping because most games are produced in China and they are glued together and this can, may, I'm not saying it's all the time, but it may result in warping, but this um, will prevent it. Okay, Order. anything you would like to add at this time? Uh, yes, maybe we can also say that there will be uh, small tokens in the game that you can also glue under the uh, game board, uh, the, the, which is a one-player board, uh, because in uh, El Boro you will shift uh, the cards underneath the board, and so to help um, that everything will stay in the same place, you can lift the, the player boards a little bit, and uh, for that reason there are some tokens in the game that you can glue under the board, and this will help to uh, play the game, yes. Yes, uh, very good remark. Uh, thank you for this. And El Burro is a one to four player game. Uh, in my opinion, it scales very well between uh, two and four players. So obviously we are 
trying a two-player version, but there's also a very challenging solitaire version, also uh, designed by Ode. But now I think Ode, it's time to move to Tabletopia. And let's see. So I'm switching here. Let me try to find this. There is Tabletopia. Uh, the good thing is that it's initializing it again because <laughs> we were absent for too long, but I'm now back in the room. So you should see now the um, game almost set up, but what you also notice it's set up for four players and we are playing just a two player game. So Ode is playing green here. I'm zooming in here and I'm playing or I'm trying to play with my thick fingers. I'm trying to play blue. Okay, Ode. Okay, so uh, I think I just give a brief uh, overview of the game and then we will start one of the game rounds because it follows a very uh, distinct sequence and it will be very easy to follow the course of one game round and explain the game in detail while doing so. So, uh, what you do in, in El Bolo is that you have a farm board. This, everybody has one player board uh, to place cards to it. And you see that the player board has a very odd shape and that's because you will put uh, these cards under the board in four different ways. So I wish to show this uh, with each of the cards and so you get an idea. Uh, but because of the problematic Tabletopia implementation, we have an issue with something that is under the board. And um, so we will, when playing this, we will place the card just uh, beside them. But in this, uh, let's just get this right here. Uh, maybe a little bit like this. So you can see that uh, each card has four different purposes here in this mm -hmm. game. So you can play the cards as a um, field to produce one of three um, uh, field goods. You can play a card as a text function here on the top of, uh, on the bottom of your board, which gives you a unique ability. And also you can play the card uh, on the right to your board, which is some administrative uh, administrative uh, functions like uh, increasing your uh, hand size or increasing your income or uh, get more stables for uh, having pigs. And the fourth uh, one is here on the top. It's a task that you have to complete in order to gain the three points uh, on the on the top of the board. So the board is actually shaped to um, support the card play. Mm -hmm. Okay, but yes, since um, normally when you play the game, you will just put stuff on it, like these small worker uh, tokens here. But when we add more cards, these tokens will fall through the player board. So we will just place the card next to the boards to prevent everything from falling through. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the main things that you do in El Buro. You have uh, multi-use cards. And you place them to your to your player board to have a cool uh, farm engine. Uh, next uh, main thing is a, a dice draft, and um, this is done here on the main board. At some point during a game round, we will roll these dice and uh, put them next to this action rondelle to perform actions. Uh, but we will come to this in a minute. So um, maybe one thing that I want to add as well, because maybe some uh, Lagania prof professionals will uh, observe this video. So we have a second player board for each player, which is the stable board where you play your donkey cards. You have a stack of donkey cards. Everybody has the same stack. And you play, place your cards to this donkey board in order to perform siesta steps on the siesta track, which is here on the main board. You will uh, place a card to get deliveries, to deliver your farm goods to different things. And also there's two um, tracks here on the, on the donkey board. Um, the first one is the milestone track, which gives you victory points when you collect milestones. 
And the other one is the, uh, what's it called in English? Trough? Trough? Uh, let me just check the English uh, term. Um, it is, uh, I think it is, uh, ta, 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 uh, trough, trough, yes, fill trough. So it's a trough track, which sounds in an amazing uh, as, a, as a term. It's basically, um, thematically speaking, you uh, have to water your, your donkeys so they, they can drink. And you're already starting with two water, right? Oh, one. Just one. one. Oh, one, right. Yeah, you, you should. I should be able to read here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, maybe let's focus uh, for a little bit on the play aid here on the left. Yes. And you can see this is basically one game round here on the left side of the play aid. Uh, each game round is divided into four steps. You have... Um, Oh, this is in German, so uh, this, this is the farm phase, the first one, where you play cards to your farm and you get uh, income and harvest. The next phase is the die phase, where you perform actions with the dies. Uh, the third um, phase is the transportation phase, where you play the donkey cards to your donkey board and perform deliveries with the goods that you uh, collected during the game. And the last phase uh, is a scoring phase that has multiple... Oh, only went on offline. Yeah, it's, it just says uh, reconnection here, which is not good, of course. But we are reconnecting. But people can still see this. So you can, uh, at this moment, you can continue talking. Okay, so the so scoring phase has multiple scoring opportunities for you and... Um, uh, this is some kind of management phase to prepare the next round and yeah. so this is basically one game round. You follow uh, the phases from one to four and we will do this for one game round uh, to explain the game to you. And maybe let me just say that on the game board there is a track um, that, uh, that you can keep track because you play four game rounds. Um, and that's the whole game. Uh, and we will show you the game by playing just one game round. Exactly. So I have to reconnect and hopefully mm -hmm. it will work. So right now let me go back to Skype for a second. Because Time to drink is... some coffee from me. Yeah. So and I'm having um, a water. And what you will also notice is you will notice my thick fingers. And uh, that's why Ode is helping me. With Tabletopia, I'm not uh, using Tabletopia very um, often. Mm. Getting back to the play aid for a second, what you noticed most probably on the left side, everything is color coded in the game. So the full game of El Burro is four game rounds, and each game round consists of four faces. And these uh, four faces are also is are numbered. And they are also color coded, so that should help. And let me check if I'm back in here. Just, just giving an example of this, what you just explained. So there are some uh, cards and tokens that refer to the game rounds, and it's not only color coded, but it's also uh, coded by icons. So mm -hmm. uh, even people with uh, seeing disabilities can uh, follow the game. So this token, for instance, um, is adding to the third step of the farm phase. And each function in the game, each effect that is um, connected to one of the game phases shows this iconography, you know? Mm -hmm. So that is actually very, very helpful in my uh, opinion. So, yeah. So you're back, okay. So I'm the, back. The first, the first thing that we do is actually check um, the round bonus that is here on um, on the game board, and it's upside down, so I just turn it around. So you can see that there are four tokens. Each of the token is um, uh, what's a what's a word? It's it belongs to a certain game round. So in this case, this token here, where I'm, with my hand on it, is for the first game round, and it says, and also here's some color code. Uh, mm -hmm. It's referring to the second game phase. Uh, and this is the, the die phase. 
And in this case, the, the token says that in this round, we can use the bonus of the bonus rondelle even with a third die. And you will understand this once we reach this phase of the game. But this is basically the first step to remind everybody of what's the uh, what's the special rule for this for this round because each round has a special rule uh, to it. Yeah. Okay. And and, and um, no, please notice there are several of these pieces per game round, so there is some variety. You cannot be absolutely sure what will be up in your next game. Yeah. And this is um, the playing order. So I chose Uli to be starting player. Which means that you can choose a starting space uh, if you want to, Uli. So, yeah. mm -hmm. the first thing that we are going to do is to choose one of the starting spaces because we will, using our donkeys, we will go uh, through the whole game board uh, during a play and try to follow the, the path until we reach the harbor here uh, at the other side of the board. So. Here on the lower right uh, corner, there are the starting spaces. And if you want to choose one of the starting spaces, you will get a bonus. Uh, you place both of your donkeys on one of the spaces and get the bonus. So let okay. me do this. And this bonus allows me to immediately move one of my two donkeys yes. to spots. And so I'm immediately moving this donkey over here. So. Two spaces, one, two. Great move. And I will uh, choose the pig for my starting space. So I'm going to the other end of the starting spaces, which means that I can use one of my game markers to place it here in the stable. And this means now I have a pig because all the goods in this game are indicated by small tokens that are placed on my player board in the right uh, mm -hmm. space. Yeah. Okay, so this was the first thing. You chose your, um, your starting place, so did I. Um, the next thing is that we will have a starting hand of six cards. So we have two different kinds of cards in this game. We have the normal farm cards that give in-game bonuses. And we have, um, and this is different from Lagania, we have a second deck of cards which are special cards that will use um, the same way, but all victory point conditions. So mm -hmm. let me just um, sh uh, see that I can deal some of the cards. So you start with five normal hope, uh, cards and you will get one of the special cards. And what you are going to do now is that you play um, one card to your farm board in the farm phase, but there's a special rule for the first round. You can play is, uh, as a special rule four cards. One card to the left of your board, one card to the top of your board, one card to the right of your board, and one card to the bottom of your board. Mm -hmm. And okay. um, le let me really stress this, this is important. So you start with already four cards in on your farm, one per side, this is important. And placing a card in the game um, does not cost any money. But the special cards, they are costing money. So, and I could place my special card immediately on the board, on, on, at one of the sides, but this would cost me an, um, one money per, no, one money. A money according to the game round. So in the first game round it's one money, in the last game round, in the fourth, it would be four. So, um, yeah. And we are starting with two money here, with two silver, to be more precise. So I could immediately do this, but I won't do it. And I'm doing this in order, maybe you can already pick your cards and do the same thing, because this is done uh, simultaneously anyway. Yes. Um, dum, dum, dum. I'm choosing my cards very wisely. Okay, uh, I'm taking this card. Oops. Oh. Oh, this is a good idea. 
Okay, so choosing the cards is something that you do in the game um, most of the time while other players can also do something because each of the cards has text on it and in our version here it's German text but um, as Uli already said we are implementing the English cards into the game and um, it will just be a few days and then you can play the game on Tabletopia with the, with the English text. So uh, because of the problems that Tabletopia has with stuff going underneath other stuff, we just uh, place the cards next to our boards. And there's uh, one rule that I have to explain now. So every time you place a card as a field, you al also already place a good token on it to represent the good. And in my case, this is one olive. Same thing here, you see it, it's over here, so I'm putting it on the card. And normally, as Ode just said, you only see this left side of the card because the rest is below the tableau, which makes it, of course, a lot more easier, a lot easier to do so, yeah. And every time you play a normal farm card that has um, as, a, as an, uh, a card to the bottom of your board, you gain a worker immediately. And I believe these are here in the, in the gray bag, no, in the brown bag. So I get one as well. And all the worker tokens that are placed on your little farmhouse on your board. Okay, so this was uh, playing cards. And every time you play cards in El Boro, you will redraw to your hand size. So let's check our hand size. Uli, you have three um, cards as hand size printed on your board, me as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, neither one of us played a card that will extend our uh, hand size. So since we play four cards, we have two cards left, and we can now redraw one card. And every time you draw a card, you can choose freely if you want to um, draw a normal uh, farm card or a special farm card. So what's your choice? I take just normal ones. Okay, so I give everybody of us one card to the hand. Okay. And we need uh, income still, right? Yes, this is the next phase. Uh, if you uh, watch this uh, playing eight again, so the, the second uh, phase, the second step in this phase was play, playing cards. Uh, and the third one is now get income, get harvest and get uh, offspring. So um, there's one coin printed as income on your player board and you played another card that has income. So your income is two coins. Mm -hmm. Mine as well. Uh, is, I think it's here in the gray bag. You can just pull two coins out and add it to your supply. Oops. Oops, it's now in my hand. You see thick fingers, but it's now there. <laughs> okay. okay, and um, yes, normally you would get now one token on every empty um, field. But since it's the start of the game and we already placed some here, we do not have some. But as an anytime action, if you want to, you can upgrade your token to gain income, mm -hmm. uh, to gain harvest. And that's uh, just to show this to our viewers, I will do this. So I pay two coins because I can upgrade my, um, my farm goods anytime I want, just following the arrow. Mm -hmm. to, the, to the next storage. So this cost me two coins to upgrade an olive into food. Mm -hmm. and you see the red numbers are costs and the green numbers would be additional income, so silver you're getting. So for example here you see it's a minus four and plus two and order moved the olive over here so it's two money according to this arrow and now it's food. Yes. Mm -hmm. And now we go to offspring, um, which is something that you do not get because you do not have two uh, pigs. But let me just introduce the viewers to some of the yeah. mm -hmm. anytime mechanisms in this game. So um, while placing my 
donkeys on the starting position that gave me a pig, Which you see I already here. have yeah. one pig. And I can use my workers to do any time actions. And I will use my one of my two workers and places on this action space here on my player board. And this allows me to buy a pig for two coins. Mm -hmm. Again, you see the red number is costs. So it costs two money, but Ode has more than enough. So he's, he's paying them. And now you see that he is having two pigs. So having two pigs, what does it mean, Ode? Yes, nature does its course and we get offspring because we have two pigs. And mm -hmm. the new offspring needs a new space because you see that the space for the pigs is limited. Um, on the right side of the board, the, the storage spaces are very small. On the other side of the board, they are not. So these are very big spaces here. So mm -hmm. you can put as many markers as you want into the storages, but the storages for the pigs are limited. So in order to gain offspring, you need a card that uh, has more space on it. So that's the reason why I chose this card, mm -hmm. that I, so I have an additional space. And I can, even in the first round, get offspring by having so many pigs. Mm -hmm. which, okay. is, which is, of course, wonderful. And um, yeah, so we, have, we are through the first phase already, right? This already was the first phase. So we, we have checking the, the uh, token here at, uh, about the special rule for the game round. We have playing cards and we have income, harvest and offspring, which is every, uh, something like managing your, your farm. And now we go to the action phase. So in the action phase, we have dice on the board and I will go to the board to show you guys how this works. So uh, in a two-player game, we have five dice. This is because we always, always have two dice per player plus one. So for example, in a three-player game, we would have seven dice. But since we are just the two of us, um, we have five dice. And now I will roll them. And this is a very nice example. Yes. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so the dice, they go on this uh, action rondelle and you see that the um, that spaces are indicated where the the dice have to go and there can only be a maximum of three dice per result but in a two-player game there can only be two of uh, each result so just in case we rolled another four we would have rolled this third four until it shows another uh, result so this yeah. is our result. That is what we have to deal with. And since Uli is the starting player, he is the first one to pick one die. So yeah, yeah. I can I can now select any one uh, of these. And I'm not sure if it's a good thing, but um, I moved a special um, starting bonus. I had already the move your donkeys or one of your donkeys two spots. Uh, so I will take the five. In addition. This is the only five in the game, so Oda won't be able to use that bonus. So I'm. Damn you. Uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm a. Uh, well, you're the designer, so I have to hurt you a little bit. So I'm picking the five over here, and it can go on the board in that spot. So, and what does this mean now? I now have two actions, basically. Yeah, or yes. maybe you explain this. This one is easy here. The... Yeah. So each each of the actions consists of two parts. So we have a basic action that is printed on the board. Yeah. And we have a bonus rondelle that uh, will be rotated at the end of the round. Mm -hmm. So in this round we have uh, these uh, combinations, but in the next round it will be different. So. Uh, in this round, you get two steps with one of your donkeys mm -hmm. on the road. Can can I just a question? I know the answer, but let's say can I uh, move both donkeys one spot? No, for each okay. action you have to choose one of your donkeys to make the steps uh, f fully. Yeah. But sometimes you will get um, donkey steps from different sources, even in one action. And then you can split the mm -hmm. steps. So that is that spot, and I will do this in a second. But Ode, please explain what else uh, am I yes. doing here? 
the bonus uh, that is printed here on the bonus round for your action is very powerful. So uh, you can go up one step on the reward tracks. And okay. for the reward tracks, we have a full uh, additional board next to the main board. You can see that there are six different tracks here on the reward uh, board, and each track has uh, some uh, goods attached to it. So, for instance, the second um, track is the grapes track, then mm -hmm. there's a, a pigs track, and food track, and so on. So, um, what you do in this game is... Oh, uh, I would just close my door so the dogs would smoke. It's a game about farming. There are dogs uh, uh, too. So I will continue here, Ode, because I will do the bonus for a second. You saw, I'm showing it again, that I can move two of my donk uh, one of my donkeys to spots. So I will do this now. But what this means, we will explain in a second. First, let me let us go back to the reward track and to to order. So this uh, this bonus that you have here is basically a common delivery. So you deliver to for the common good, um, and you can choose any one good that has a track mm -hmm. and move up one of your markers one step on the track. So it's basically your choice. Um, you I have to spend one of your goods in order to move up a track and uh, you put the, uh, the good in the... Yeah, and, and this maybe is a... I will choose the olive. So I'm... No, uh, it's not working. Because what do you... Ah, yeah, because it's just... Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm moving up one spot. You see, there are several spaces here per track and you always advance on the reward uh, board. But let me go back to my board for a second so that you can see um, I do not have at this moment and hopefully people by shifting here people do not get seasick um, <laughs> because I'm shifting frantically between boards here you, you see I do not have that many options but there are other things which makes this game so interactive so powerful so I have to pay one good right for for yes, this, you chose you chose the olive, and so the, the this olive is death. gone. But let's say I'm not having any goods here, so it it, it it is possible I could at this moment purchase something, yes, and this makes it so powerful. You see, I also have two of my meeples, two of my workers here, and I could say, well, hmm, this uh, this is now a good moment to move it over here I can use this bonus per game round normally only once and I could now select stuff from over here so I could have selected something else as well yeah. and because you can do this in between actions you see this makes this game pretty unique and very different than a lot of games where you have a very tight clearly structured um, sequence yeah. of play so yeah. but I did this I um, per, uh, paid with my olive that I still had on my field over here so it's gone and the other actions and let me move back to the main board here oops is that I moved one of my donkeys um, two spots and you see now I have both donkeys in these in this space but order, you see, there are two donkeys already printed on this space. What does this mean? And I'm also seeing there are spaces with just a single donkey. So, so what does this mean? Um, yes, so the, the road that we travel, it works um, like this. So every time you reach a spot that has one donkey printed, Mm -hmm. you get the reward with uh, going there with even one donkey. So, for instance, if you just move one step further, you get one uh, step on your troll uh, yeah. track. But um, some of the uh, st spaces also have two donkeys, so you have to be there at least with two donkeys. And this means you now get a milestone, which uh, is on your stable board. Yeah, I'm moving to that one and we'll show it. 
And you see now your milestone marker is on the space for zero, but now you gain a milestone marker, which is something you will never lose during the game and will give you victory point income at the end of the round. Mm -hmm. Do I? So I'm just moving it up to one. So I am made some progress here and it is helpful. So really on yes. the main board, what is important is whenever you see a single donkey, um, in, in gray here, you know, first donkey of yours to reach that spot, you get the bonus. If there are two on, on it, it ju you're just getting the bonus if the second one has reached that spot, or surpassed it, so moved through it. Then, of course, you are getting also the bonus. So I think that's my action, right? No, you forgot something, and something very interesting, because the the reward board yeah. has, has its yeah, name for a reason. Of course. Um, the, the reward that you get for making one step is that you get um, a farm extension. Yeah. And there are two different ones, uh, you see. Um, you've just followed the icons here on the board, so you get one with the uh, hay, hay roof, and you have some to choose from. Yeah. Those are here in your personal supply, so you can choose now one of your farm extensions uh, that has a... Yeah, and, and I'm, uh, you see, I'm interested also, and I'm not into pig breeding. Um, I think I have money. I'm thinking to use this one here because, oops, I, it will increase my fruit production whenever I'm using it. So you're placing it ab above the weaker version of, of it. So it's uh, e what you cannot do is move this over here, right, Oda? No, that's not possible. So you have to uh, yeah. place it over here. And now you see that the action that your workers can do for you, they are getting better when you um, deliver to this reward tracks. So you, every time you get, uh, you go up a different track, you get a new of those farm extensions to increase your actions. Strength. Yeah. So they are powerful, and and you may select them. So and yeah. Okay. So but now I'm done. Yes, this was the action. You moved your donkeys and you did the common delivery. So this is my turn now, and I will choose a number four die because this gets me from the bonus one down I will get another worker um, which is here one. which you see here yes. so it's another worker so order already has three workers which is of course some additional flexibility yeah but I also placed one already so I gained my strength back and the basic action here is that I can either go up the siesta track which influences the uh, turn order or I can do free upgrades without paying you know when I upgraded my olive I paid two coins because I can do this anytime I want but if I use some actions like this here with the number four I can do it for free but I will do uh, I can even mix and match so I will go up one step on the siesta track, mm -hmm. maybe see if I can snatch the starting player from you later. Mm -hmm. And I will do one free upgrade because I have, uh, oh no, let me just see. Um, no, I'm, I'm aiming for this market here, so I need all the, all the picks, so I do another step on the siesta track and you can just stay here on the space number one. Okay, yeah. so this was my action, and now it's your turn again. Yeah, and I will just copy you because um, Oda knows the game, so I think it's a good thing to also uh, use a 4. Um, so let me just grab the 4 and move it to my board, and then it's basically... Oops, no, I lost it. Can, have you placed it, Oda? Mm, almost. I, I will do it for you. Okay, thank you so much. So I will also move up two steps on the siesta track. As Oda said, I can mix and match here. So one step on the siesta track and one free upgrade. And or I, it could be two upgrades and no on the siesta track, but I want to move up here as well. 
and I'm and, now. And you place your head on top of mine, so this means uh, you are in the lead on the Siesta track again. Which is well deserved, in my opinion. And um, uh, yeah, back to differ. <laughs> and I think the meeples are in the brown back, right? Yes. So I'm also getting a third worker, which I put on my. So I have lots of guys which I may use later. And that was my second action. Okay, so I'm going to perform my second action by using a number six die. And I want to mention that there is little possibility in this game to influence the dice. So basically you, you get what the, the die roll gives you. But uh, like I already said, some of the cards, they have texts here, or all of the cards have texts, but some of them uh, can be used to influence the dice. Mm -hmm. But mainly um, you do not get to, to influence the dice, so there is not too much uh, to think about either mm -hmm. if you want to use it or if you want to use a different die. So uh, I chose the die number six, and mm -hmm. let me get back to the to the middle. So what can you do the, here, Oda? Yes. So the rondel bonus shows that I can get um, another step on the Siesta track, giving me the lead the lead again, and I will get a coin in addition. And now we go uh, to the to the one of the most important things in the games, which are the deliveries. So there's two different kinds of deliveries here, and um, <clears throat> I will explain the donkey delivery first. So the donkey delivery is, and the Lagrania professionals will already know this, is delivering one of the goods that you have to uh, um, something that, that you want to supply. And there's two different things that you can supply. First of all, you can supply your cards. Mm -hmm. uh, the top uh, side of the card shows a personal task. And my personal task is to uh, deliver one of the uh, picks over here and uh, one of the uh, workers. But I don't want to do this. So I will go to one of the two markets that are already uh, accessible for us at the beginning of the game. So behind the starting spaces on the main board, there are mm -hmm. two markets that we can deliver to. There are more markets to um, deliver to, but we did not reach them because you have to be there with a donkey to be able to deliver to this market. So I will just um, place one of my pigs on this market, which is one delivery, and I place it in my green row, mm -hmm. completing the first of three uh, picks that I need to deliver to this market. So uh, what you see is one pick here is not good enough, you're not getting anything, two is not good enough, you need just three of this kind. And uh, yes. you see that all the markets have different, or they need different things, different stuff. And um, as Ode said, it is important to notice that right now only two are accessible. Yeah, I could have, if I would have done it differently, I could have moved my first donkey up to here to be able to deliver to this market and then the other one would have been here, but then I have no milestone. So that's yes. what Ode is uh, doing with a, with a donkey delivery. Right, yes. because let me just go back to the um, rondelle to the bonus. What do you see here to the six? Order did the siesta and did the uh, and got the silver, and then there is donkey plus what is this, or can you do both? No, you can yeah. do just one of both. So it's it's either a donkey delivery and something that's new to a burrow is the goat delivery, which I think we should mention a little bit later. Right. Okay, we can we can skip this for now. Uh, just just know that there's a, an option here when you use the six die. Okay, we will we will see. Um, but Ode did a donkey delivery, and so he is done with uh, with yes. the, the one. And now because there's just a single die, and what is the standard rule? And then we have to get back to the special bonus uh, here. What is yes. the standard rule for this? The, for the standard rule is that now the the bonus rondelle for the oops for the um, 
for the last die is uh, is not executed. So mm -hmm. every everybody now gets to execute the die number six. So it's basically the common die for everybody. Mm -hmm. the, the first two dies that are uh, just for us, but the last die is for everybody. Yeah. But you do not get the bonus from the rondelle. Yeah. And since we now have this uh, tile here, we can now use the bonus, which is the special rule for this round. But we cannot use the bonus from uh, from the rondelle space that is uh, adjacent to the to the basic. We have to go one step to the left or one step to the right. Yeah. And you can you're the first player. You can choose first, so you get one delivery, either a donkey delivery or a goat delivery, or and you can choose either to, to do another two steps with your donkey, or you could do another um, common delivery to the to the reward tracks. Yeah, and um, I think um, uh, so. So you could think uh, that because I'm uh, on my on the race to the port of Palma, I'm already ahead. So maybe this is a good thing. <laughs> then I would choose another two steps. But of course, this on the reward track is also very attractive. But let's assume for for right now that I want to be quick here on my way to Palma. So I'm again selecting one of my two donkeys and I'm moving it up two steps. One, two. And I stay with the four here for a second. Now, as we explained already, I have access to this local market because my first donkey has reached the fourth space, Order so far has no exit, access to it. But I moved through number three, and it's only a sign for a single donkey, so I made it. So I'm moving back to my board. Oh, you will be seasick seeing me doing this on Tabletopia. So I'm moving up this one on the trough board for another step so from one to two yes so the, the reason you want to uh, to have tr uh, steps on the trough track is uh, something that we will explain soon because it's important in uh, the transportation phase this comes after the action phase yeah but but you have to see my donkeys are thirsty they yes. are thirsty and they love to get water so i've done this and now, again, because it's a six, I either have a donkey or a goat delivery. And like Oda, I'm doing a donkey delivery. And I'm selfish. I want to... Oh, I, my thing is I either also need a pick or two money. I have money, which is fine, but I could also pay for a pick which actually costs also too money, right? Mm -hmm. so, no. uh, yes. so I'm using one of my workers here for the pick. So I'm moving over here, but now I have to pay too money. Can I just delete them in uh, the money in... Uh, no. I will, I will take them from yeah. and put them in. So I paid this and now I also using, because I paid this and it's to my stable, I move one of my markers on top of the pick because I did this. Great. Okay, that's my move for the common die and now it's over Odis. Um, okay, common die. I'll do another donkey delivery and uh, move my next pick to the the market here yeah. and so I'm close to completing this yes and as a bonus action I will well I will I want a reward as well so I will spend no I don't <laughs> no I'm not sure what, what do I do okay I spent my my uh, food mm -hmm. give it back to the common supply and go up one step on the food track mm -hmm which gives me um, one of the uh, extensions that has a green background. And I will use this one here. Uh, I think these are tiled roofs. The other are thatched roof. Uh, hopefully this is the uh, correct English term. Tiled roofs, yeah. And, and of course you see this is pretty powerful now. So, yes. um, 
So I will use it right away. I can uh, place one of my workers on it to play a card. Mm -hmm. And let me just check my cards because I want to play another card as a field. Mm -hmm. so, so you see Ode now has already two fields here. Yes. And, and different kinds. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I get one grape right away because I just played the card and now I have two cards in my hand. Uh, my hand size is still three, so I get to draw mm -hmm. another card. Yeah, and please play. please remember this. As soon as you place a, uh, play a card, you may uh, then um, get back to your hand size, which may yeah. be if you place it to the right side of your board and it has a correct symbol, which may be larger than before. So order that was the first that was the second um, phase of the first round, right? Yes, that's, that's true. So we move to the third phase, which is the transportation phase. And now we have to explain a little bit. So yeah. let me just get your board. Oh, it's also. Yeah, leave, uh, just leave it there. It will be fine for, for uh, this. Okay. Uh, uh, so uh, we have a small deck of donkey cards. Uh, we'll shuffle them for you right away. So I'll shuffle mine. And you get to pick four cards from this deck for this round. And you can uh, look at them uh, while I do the same. But let me just explain what you do. So from these four cards, you will uh, put one on the board and uh, place it to your siesta spot. One of the cards goes to the delivery spot. One of the cards goes under your board as a scoring card. And the other one goes to a discard pile which is important because, um, as you can see, the donkey deck has 12 cards and it will be exhausted at the end of round three. Uh -huh. So what you do in the fourth round is, because the deck is empty, you will use your discard pile to be used in the last round, which means that right now, from the beginning, you are setting aside cards to be used in the last round, which is a very strategic approach. Yes. Um, so you can... You can uh, be your own um, master for the last round, uh, but until then you are uh, yes, limited by the random draws of the cards. Yeah, and, and actually you may look a little bit into the future, so this is actually a, a very nice uh, thing. And you know which three cards are available for the fourth uh, game turn, and this makes it really exciting. And this is again done simultaneously. So yes. both of us can now take a look and I will, you're not looking at me, uh, I will just put cards here openly on my board so that people can immediately see what they mean, right? Okay. So let me just... I will just place the cards um, like this and... <coughs> uh, flipping is this symbol, flip, yes. Okay, done. Yes, I made the mistake and placed something under the board so everything fell through. <laughs> <laughs> the beauty of Tabletopia at El Boro. <laughs> the donkeys are smart. They don't like to play online. So, yeah. <laughs> Let me just uh, rearrange this. don't know if you want to cut it, but... No, that's fine. And, and people just see my board anyway, so because I'm I've zoomed in on my board, so everything's fine order. <laughs> okay, very well. Okay, so we distributed the cards to um, to work like this, and now we go through the transportation phase, which is basically printed on the board. So you see here is uh, the first step we do is draw the four cards simultaneously and distribute them mm -hmm. and then we um, flip all the cards that are distributed uh, besides the one that we set aside to the to mm -hmm. discard pile and then we go to the siesta step of the phase so this is the, the second step of the phase which you see here which, right yes which will, will be done in turn order and what you see on the cards is on the one hand a bonus that you can get right away when the card is um, flipped over, done, yeah, no, performed, when it's performed. 
yeah. yes, when it's performed. So right now you can choose to get an olive, um, a grain or uh, grapes. Yeah, and I think because I have an olive field, I do not have that much demand for it. I think I will take a grape and because it's not on the field, it will go immediately where? Here, right? No. No, that's for wine. So yeah, I'm, I'm taking it immediately to wine to cheat a little bit. No, you can do it, but you have to pay three coins. Nah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm uh, really uh, too poor to do this. <laughs> okay. Well, so uh, this was the first thing. So you, you, every card, in, except the fours, because of they are very powerful, have a small bonus on them. Uh, and the lower the number on the card is, the, uh, the higher is the bonus you get. Yeah. Because now you get three steps on the siesta track if you want to yeah of course uh, because i think this is important uh, to be ahead so i'm here and i'm moving up three steps because a card told me it's a three basically one two three yes but you have uh, an option to manipulate the value yeah. of the card and now we go back to the trough track so if you want to you can pay steps on the trough track to place this little plus token uh, with uh, one plus on the card, which means you have to spend one step on the trough tra track, or you can even place it with two plus tokens, uh, with two pluses on the card, but this would mean you have to play, pay, uh, pay three steps on the Which I do not have. Track. That's something you do not have, so your option is to place a, a one plus on the card, which, which, which will gain you another step on the uh, Let me just check. Uh, no, I'm not doing this, so I'm keeping it as it is. So I'm now in this spot over here. Okay, so this is basically what you did, and now you can perform uh, the siesta track. Uh, as you can see, the siesta track is divided into two sides. So the uh, from our position, the left side is giving you victory points, and you reached the area that gives you one victory point so this uh, um, so sorry to briefly interrupt this is the as a sun symbol basically prestige these are victory points yes, and there is a, a track here so this gives me a, a stunning number of one prestige order can you please mark this for 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 a second so, so one step on the prestige track and can we now immediately stop the game because i've beaten order one to nil so no no no, no. <laughs> you have to give me a chance to, to get <laughs> yeah that's why i, I want to stop it now not later and um, now i have two more uh, this is the right side of the um, the, the siesta track from from this position and it tells you how many steps i can move on the road and it's again a single donkey, so I cannot split it one one. And you see, one is already over here. Uh, hmm, shall I? Yeah, why not? I move it up because then we can mention the um, the the road when there are several options. So I'm moving this one up, up here. First step is five. I'm not getting the bonus again because I would need two donkeys here, both of mine. Mm -hmm. I do not have them. Order so. What to do now? I can move to that spot and I can yes. move to that spot. What, what are the differences? Okay, so here the track has an intersection and you have to decide which way you want to go. So basically going the lower path is, uh -huh. uh, is a short a cut in yeah. this position here. So you have just one step as a six and then you go to the seven. Yeah. Um, and if, but if you go the longer way, you uh, get um, a better bonus because then you get a milestone with only being there with one donkey, yeah. which is very powerful at the beginning. But the, the downside is that you have to go the longer track here. Yeah, but but I'm greedy. I want to grab all my all the bonuses, so I'm moving over here, which is longer because it's one, two, three, four steps to the seven, and here it would be one. Two, so much so shorter, but I immediately because again there is just a single um, donkey needed. I'm getting another milestone, yes, on which milestone I'm on your donkey board, which I'm immediately marking, and mm. that is that, right? 
Yes, this was your siesta step and the siesta phase, and now you can discard this card. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's no longer needed. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Okay. So my bonus is one step on the troll track here. And I also have a three, but I will spend one of the uh, steps from the troll track to increase the value of my card to four because I cannot stand it. <laughs> well, three, four, because then I will get um, two victory points. Yeah. So I snatch the lead and force you to play a little bit longer. It's a nightmare. And also I get um, three, three steps. steps. Yeah. So I have to, to gain a little bit of speed here, which gives me, uh, let me just... Yeah, you can, you, can you, two, you're also three. getting a water here. And I get the troll track one step again back. So um, this was uh, our uh, siesta phase. I can discard my card. Mm -hmm. And now there's a small, uh, middle phase so we now change the playing order because I am higher in the uh, siesta track now mm -hmm. we flip uh, and what, when when does this take effect order right after the siesta phase so after everybody performs their step on the siesta phase so uh, yeah and uh, let me again emphasize this this is not for next game round uh, it's if in effect right now because we are yes. in a two-player game and everybody we, we both have done this so now order is playing first okay yes um <clears throat> okay then let me just uh, explain the next step which is being performed in the new playing order is mm -hmm. a free goat delivery this is something that we did not so far so i let me just explain yes to please you the difference between uh, goat delivery and uh, donkey delivery. So the donkey delivery is basically there to supply your personal um, tasks, but mm -hmm. with the goat delivery you can supply the tasks of other people. So in this case I am going to spend, let me just check what I have left, nothing, so um, I am snatching another good. Mm -hmm to deliver it to you and I will take, uh, let me just check, I will, I'm will. i going to take a grape and then I will deliver it to you. Um, so I can check now for your personal uh, cards that you have on your board, but there's only two money uh, here in this No board. grape, I, I, this card doesn't want any grape, but we can move now to the main board. Yes. So uh, some would argue because this uh, market here is already uh, unlocked by you uh, that I can deliver here to you, but that's not possible because mm -hmm. I did not unlock it. So mm -hmm. I cannot deliver to the market, neither for me nor for you, but I can place um, the grape on this position here and I have to spend uh, one grape and one coin to go mm -hmm. here. And I place my marker, let me just grab it, mm -hmm. in your line. This is important. So you see the green marker octagon is in the blue line because order is actually helping me a neighboring farm here. Yes. And But th there needs to, to, to do so, there needs to be a benefit for both of us. So you yes, see, so for me it's simple because I only need to fill two spots now. But what is your benefit order? Oh, I get uh, for a goat delivery every time you do one, you get a, be a bonus on the reward track. So I delivered a grape to you, so I'm going up the grape track one step. And I will get another bonus here. And let me just see, I will take this one here. Uh, and I have better options with money now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but um, there is one special rule um, yes. because you can see there is no track for coins. I could either choose um, to go up the track for the grapes or I could choose one victory point because I delivered mm -hmm. silver to you. So, mm -hmm. in the, but in this case, I want the, the step on the track 
but if you go back to your card, um, yeah. here is the option to deliver to silver. Mm -hmm. And if I deliver these two silver to you, I would not get a, a, a bonus by going up on the reward tracks. For delivering silver, you always get one victory point. But I did not want this because I need an upgrade for my farm boat. Mm -hmm. But what about this marker here, Ode? What does yes. this marker here mean? This is basically, well, what What do you, did we call it? It's a support marker? It's a support I, marker, right. I, I supported you by uh, delivering to your, um, to your task, so I get one victory point and flip this marker. Mm -hmm. Because um, for delivering the first time to any player will get you one victory point from this support marker. The, the thing is that if I do not deliver to you, because uh, maybe I don't want to, because I don't want to help you or whatever, mm -hmm. um, and the, the marker is still open at the end of the round, you will get this victory point. So this is an incentive to deliver to the other players as uh, at least once. Yeah, and, and uh, I, let, let, let me stress this. Um, let's say we are in a four-player game. Um, it makes sense that everybody gets support and help because you're getting the victory point. So it's not that everybody is always helping the same person. Of course you can do so, but um, it's actually it's an incentive, this additional victory point for um, to, to, that everybody, everyone is being helped. So yes. you see, helping other players gives you quite a few bonuses. It makes sense to do so, right? Of course, for me, I'm having a, an easier time filling this up. Yeah, and so this is basically something that I really love uh, about uh, this interaction because it's a very positive act. So everybody benefits from these interactions. I also really like games that have uh, something that you take from others or that's a little bit more mean. But in this game, I wanted a very positive player interaction. And this, this is the way that I implemented it. So everybody, everybody gets something, you know. Yeah, and I'm having a bad connection here. So you need to talk again here to continue. So I need to reconnect and it won't let me at this moment, but I think it will in a second. Yeah, back to lobby. Let me move in this direction and then it, it's initializing again. And I think our good friend Carsten, he mentioned this very nicely. So I'm, I think I'm already back, but he mentioned this in a very nice way when he said there are lots of games with negative interaction. And uh, of course it's true and I love mean games as well, but this is a positive thing and it, re it is really fitting well in this game. So I think that this is a brilliant mechanic. But we were still in the GOAT phase, GOAT delivery step. Not, it's not a phase, it's a step here because Ode switched the um, turn order he already did so, and I'm now doing the same thing. So I have a single go delivery. And of course, I want to help order. And mm. yeah, well, mm, no, uh, no. But I can basically do the same thing what he uh, did. I have a grape over here that I got a little bit earlier. And I will deliver this together with a money. So it's, I'm, it's my turn now. I'm now second. I have a single goat delivery. And I'm not going to deliver to Oda's card. I will basically do the same thing what he did. I will deliver to uh, the local market. So Oda, please take the grape there. I snatch it from you. But I also have to pay a coin, right? Yes. And of course, it's your decision again if you want to get a victory point for delivering to me and to get another victory point from a support marker. So it's basically two points. Or if you want to get the one point from the support marker and go up on the... Yeah, I'm, I'm doing the same thing because yeah. I think this is, uh, at this moment, more lucrative. So I'm getting yeah. one victory point for the support marker here, which is now flipped. And, and I'm getting one of the 
What's the term? I think I mentioned it before. Tiled roof markers. Yeah, tiled roof markers sound good. And I think uh, uh, this one is maybe a good choice. So I'm uh, taking this one. And now we have completed that step as well, right? True. Okay, so we move to the next card because uh, we uh, did two cards on the donkey board and the second card is now for um, uh, delivery. So mm -hmm. my card gives me the benefit of playing one card and going up one step. Uh, no, uh, performing one donkey delivery and it's straight donkeys, not mm -hmm. goats now. Um, and I will first play a card from my hand because it's a bonus for my card and I'm in desperate need of a worker. So I play a one card to the lower side of my board mm -hmm. and I will draw one because I played a card uh, and hide my card. So let me just check. Uh, and because of this, I will gain another worker. No, this is not a worker. Okay, and I will place it right away because I am desperate need for money. Which, and we will see this in a couple of minutes, why Ode wants to use that money. We will see yeah. this very soon, but for now, he has improved the money capability and a worker is, has been uh, just sent to that spot and Ode has received four more silver here. Okay. And now I am going to deliver one time and I will deliver to this market with my third delivery which completes yeah. my role. And so what does it mean, Ode? Yes, the, the game is now uh, halted for a short moment to score this market because I completed it. So the first thing that I do is that I place one of the markers here in this spot to show that I already completed this market. And I will get one uh, prestige for it, plus a number of prestige depending on the round. So in this uh, case, it's one extra point because we are in round one, mm -hmm. and which gives me two points uh, on the prestige track. These two, they can go in the bag and the marker here means now I completed this, I got the bonus point, and I cannot deliver to this market uh, or you uh, to my row again. I can yeah. still deliver to the market to your row, mm -hmm. uh, but not for me. And you can also do not do goat deliveries to my uh, uh, position. Pick, pick and deliveries, yeah. Uh, goat deliveries to your pick line, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know. And as an uh, additional reward, I will get one of those tokens here, which uh, are called marked bonuses. And those have two sides. <clears throat> the uh, front side is uh, any uh, so immediate effect. In this case, I can choose either one pig or two different, uh, f uh, what's, what's it called, field goods. I yeah. Mm -hmm. field goods. Harvest um, goods. They are harvest goods. Basic harvest goods. Yeah. Okay, now I I just saw that on my card here I need a pig, so I will get the pig instead. I'm sorry. Yeah, and you see the arrow here, uh, the lightning bolt is telling you this is immediate and only once. Yes, the, all those markers have a flip side, and in this case it's an income bonus for the next round, but those um, are just flipped at the end of the round, so I get the immediate effect, uh, but the the, the permanent effect is only executed in later rounds. So I just place it here because uh, the iconography says so and this is the bonus that I get. Yeah, and um, this is actually a very good thing because you have to see it's not only the immediate effect which we just saw, either two basic harvest goods or a pick, but having this marker already in the first game round which will mean that Ode can use this marker several times uh, now so this is a good move and this also tells you why these local markets are so important um, it's one thing is the victory points and let me now if i complete my row here 
I'm not getting the bonus point here and I'm getting the marker here later. So it's not that, the, this, mar that this marker stack is exhausted. There is one marker per player. I can still get this bonus, but it will be later. So maybe not that strong. Okay. So I, I'm not going to um, boost my card with another plus marker because I'm done with mm -hmm. what I have planned for this round and I'm keeping the tr uh, troll marker on spot number two. Mm -hmm. So my turn is over and we go over to you, which means uh, that you can perform your card. Yeah, games. and then you see I'm, I'm in the racing game here. <laughs> um, this is the only thing I'll do at this moment pretty well. And let me see, is it now a good step to move ahead? No, I'm uh, using, uh, taking my second donkey and it's moving up here, but no additional bonuses because it's just these bonuses for the first player, uh, for the first donkey. And so I already got these bonuses and done. And me too, I'm having a single delivery and I want to deliver to my own card. Yes. And the, the problem is, points. yeah, the problem is I have just a single money left. So, oh, too bad. But no, I have still two workers here, which will later be in the, um, at the end of the turn, it may be a little bit problematic, but it's a good, um, good example. So I'm moving this guy over here. I'm getting immediately two money, two silver. I'm not taking them because I immediately have to spend the money anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. And now we see that I've fulfilled this card completely because both sides, left and right, are fulfilled. So this card is discarded, right? Yeah, let's just uh, perform the card effect first. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. uh, since you completed it, you will get the victory points indicated on the card, which is two because it was a very simple um, card. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will give you the prestige, so you get two prestige, and every card uh, gives you two steps on the on the road with your donkey, which is indicated on the board here yeah. next to the card uh, slots. So it's again the race game is underway. I'm moving up and I'm this time, I'm moving up here, which will be give me another trough point, water. And now I'm moving the short one. So I'm getting another point. So I'm getting two points. No, that's not, that's not right. <sighs> Too bad. Do I have to go the other route? Um, you will get this um, bonus from... one. Yeah. This bonus here, because you uh, yeah. are here with the second one, but you already been on a space with a number six. With your first so one. I cannot take this bonus again. You cannot take this bonus again because this is um, this is basically the same height. Playing with the bloody designers, it's always a nightmare. Uh, they, they, they are. It's it's very difficult to cheat. Um, so, so, and that is basically my card here because both effects have been done. So I'm discarding my card. It's up here. Let me just let me just weigh yeah. in on some issues here or some some options that you have. Yeah. Uh, so you can see now why uh, Uli is is moving very fast on the road, and there's a reason for it because. Uh, you can get to the other markets here pretty quickly and you see, you saw that I snatched the bonus point here and the points are getting um, getting bigger here at, uh, at the markets that are later in the, in the game. So there's a, a huge benefit by going up there and deliver there first. And also each of the market has a different uh, market bonus. Yeah. So there are eight different market bonuses in the game and, uh, and the, we have in the rules a uh, situation explained for the first play that you uh, yeah. place them uh, in this way, like we just uh, prepared it here on Tabletopia, but basically it, uh, you can distribute them in a different way. So every, every uh, market goes to a random market and so the game will be different every time you play it, if you play with this rule. So 
So this this marker might have been here. So yeah. it would be very easy to access this marker, which gives you card play. Uh, it, it, it enhances your card play, you know? Yeah. And, and uh, this is exactly why, why this game is so versatile, that, that you have so many different options. It's not one game is the same, because the arrangement normally is always different. And we won't see this in the, because we are just um, playing one game round. But my aim is to get to the port of La Palma, of Palma, where there are boats and the, the spots in here, I'm zooming in here for a second, they give me victory points. And being there first gives me more options, um, of course. So th that is also, of course, why I'm racing ahead here pretty quickly. But I cannot do everything, of course. Yes, yeah, sure. Okay, so we did um, the whole transportation phase, and now we're going to the scoring phase. Mm -hmm. And now it's your time to shine, because you, uh, the first thing that we'll do is that we score our milestone markers. And I did not manage to get any milestones done by now, because my donkeys are not fast enough. Um, but you already have two milestones, which means you will get two victory points, giving you the lead again. Which is fantastic. Which and is also, fantastic. you reach this special spot on the uh, prestige track, which gives you a one-time bonus uh, from a market bonus that is placed here on the special place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is not something that you take to your board. Um, this is just there for everybody to snatch when yeah. reaching the sixth prestige. So, so you get uh, one upgraded good for free. Yeah, and uh, this is... With, because these goods are pretty costly, this is nice, and I think because I have some big problems there uh, that I'm taking some food. Maybe useful later in in the game. So I'm I'm doing this. Yes, you already reached the market where you use the upgraded fruit here, uh, which is the third one. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a very wise decision. Yes. Okay, so this was the first step. No milestone points for me, two points for you. Mm -hmm. And um, now we go to the uh, support marker. No, no, is it right? No. We are going to the... Oh, the stable. Uh, the stable scoring. Yeah, all right. This is the third card that we uh, put to the, um, to the, to the stable. So um, you see the card is supposed to be uh, placed underneath the board so that only the number can be seen and uh, so I don't get the bonus from my very low card that I placed here so this worker is not uh, going to my supply and we just now compare the values of the cards mm -hmm. and those values cannot be boosted by the plus marker so you have a four and I have a one this means you uh, win the stable scoring which is one point round so in the first round the winner of this gets one point this is another prestige point for mm -hmm. you my friend I don't like this a bit I, I love it okay <laughs> I love it uh, what do you have to keep in mind these cards you saw the two cards over here they were discarded out of the game you never see them again these cards here which are normally half below the board stay till the end of the game so next let's assume next round i'm playing a one i'm having five points and order may have a three to have four points and i would again be first place third round i'm playing another one and order has another three so he's suddenly in the in the lead getting more points and per round there are more points to gain yeah yes the, the upside uh, for you from your decision is that you uh, that you have a very high card yeah. and the, the probability that you will score in the subsequent rounds is very high but you already sacrificed a very yeah. strong uh, card that give, would give you many steps on the siesta track or many deliveries but you chose to to use it for the stable scoring which can be very powerful as well yeah ab absolutely correct so we, we did this step two and now it's now we go to the support marker both mm -hmm. our support markers are flipped to the to the side with the what's it called uh that is uh, the basket side is this basket correct side, yes so no points for either one of us and now the um, tokens get flipped back to the victory point side for the next round 
Mm-hmm. And now we come to the situation that we need to pay our workers. So uh, our workers that were put to work uh, on the action spaces that are on your play board, they need to be paid um, in order to get home. So Mm -hmm. you need one coin per worker, which Mm -hmm. is a total of two coins for you. And if you do not pay them, they will stay on those action spaces and go on strike so because each action space can only hold one worker and if you don't pay them to go home and not to your personal supply they will go home um, you need to unblock uh, these by paying yeah. them. so how do you think you are going to yeah do and, and I, of course i would love to have both return to my farm and both work again but you see there are two workers and i have just a single money i'm paying the single silver so it's paid, but I can only move back one of these. So I'm taking this one here. And the pig mar- uh, bonus here is basically blocked because this worker, rightfully so, is on strike. Yes, but playing with the designer, you cannot cheat. This worker goes home. <sighs> it's too bad. It's too bad. Yeah. Which is of course, which is of course a good thing because otherwise each player would have five or six workers all the time in their farm. Yeah. Okay, I already uh, put four workers to work, and of course I am a good uh, employee, <laughs> yeah. employer, so I can pay four coins, and all my people go home and are properly paid, and do not need to go on strike. It's a harsh time at Oli's farm. (laughs) Okay, so uh, the last steps here are basically to prepare the next round. So um, the the bonus tile from the first round gets flipped and you can see the the progress of the game by uh, how many of those tiles are flipped. Mm -hmm. Um, What's next? Okay, I can um, flip my market bonus to its permanent side and Uh increase my income for the next round Uh Um, and the rondel has to be the rondel moves Uh, let me just check how this can move in tabletopia let me just see Hmm. i think yeah oh yes like this so now the actions and the bonus actions are distributed in a different way which is also a good thing. And then the siesta track has siesta to be... Track, yes. So um, you go to the zero space at first and then I will... So yeah. this, the playing order will be the same. Yeah. And, and this... this was basically one round of a rule. And yeah, uh, one of four rounds. And of course, in later game rounds, you have more options but you see if you know the rules it's not a terribly complex games um a complex game and i'm going out of tabletopia so that people can see us again here just a second let me do this so we are back here and and first of all thank you so much Odi, here for um checking me and not cheating too much Uh, for presenting this game and also Mike and you for a really wonderful experience. In my opinion, what what the game shows, it's dice drafting, it's multi-purpose cards, but it's also these every time actions. So I'm having no money, but I'm having this option with a meeple, with a worker to get two coins. When to do so, how to do so, how to do this, maybe several uh, things in a row that uh, that is, in my opinion, really uh, excellent. And having no market, like La Granja, but having this race is, it gives a totally different feel. And as Oda already said here, these support deliveries to other people, that is also, in my opinion, a fantastic design idea. Yeah, let me just maybe point out some of the things that are different from La Gagna. You already said, uh-huh. uh, you already saw this, but basically the game progress, the uh, game sequence is is almost the same, but everything is a little bit different here. So when you choose one die, um, you get a bonus action from the rondelle. So this is, is something extra. 
uh, and also something extra to think about. So which die do I leave for the others? Which die do I desperately need? And also uh, playing cards is still the same like in Lagrania, but also there's a different deck. We hadn't the chance to introduce it to some of the cards now, because basically the idea is that all these cards are scoring uh, options, which is uh, something that you normally do not play in the first round, but there's also strategies that support that. Mm -hmm. And uh, also the donkey deliveries, they are basically the same mechanism like in Lagrania, but also enhanced because you do not have a small chip that gives you uh, yeah. either two deliveries and two steps on the test attacks. No, you have a complete, uh, let's just say, mini game within the game when you distribute your four cards to the to the stable tableau. And uh, so basically the game is um, hopefully a, a, a good standalone game. So it, it has its own meaning and uh, yeah, let's just uh, see if people um, agree. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I can, I, I'm at least I'm fully agreeing. And this, of course, you may shelve this under publisher's uh, hyperbole, but I think it's one of the finest games if you uh, in in the Euro market for Kenna or Xbox uh, games in the last couple of years. So and you see that the Lagranja family can evolve. So it's really a great additional step in my opinion. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so again, Ode, thank you very much for your time, and um, let's soon move back to the farms of Mallorca again. Okay? Would love to. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. bye.